That's right. You've moved on up, my friends. You are no longer in primary. Well, yes, you still are in primary, but you're like upper primary. Way to go. Congratulations, my friends, and welcome to my very first fourth grade video. That's right. I don't really teach fourth grade. I really don't. You know what? But I decided to do some fourth grade videos. Some requests went out. Anyway, my name is Mr. Warren. Welcome, my friends. I hope you enjoy this video. We're going to look at lesson 1.1 the Go Math uh, series. And as you can see, we have a topic of model place value relationships. That's right. We're going to be modeling using our base 10 blocks, looks like, based on the picture there. Our essential question, this is our purpose. This is our learning target, if you will. It's the objective of this lesson. It's how can you describe the value of a digit? Oh, yeah. Every year, you know, I ask my students, hey, how many digits are there in mathematics? And it's so funny, they'll say, 1,000. No. Uh, infinity. No, no, no. We only have 10 digits in math. That's right. We have 10 digits just like we have on our hands. We have 10 digits, 0 through 9. That's all. So let's go ahead and get started in. Unlock the problem. Looks like we have activity. Build numbers through 10,000. It looks like the materials that we're going to need today are base 10 blocks. I hope that you have those base 10 blocks with you as we begin to explore place value. Okay, as we look at our picture here, look at there. We have ourselves, looks like a little cube. Yeah, like your little cube. You're a little guy compared to your buddy that's right next door. That's right, he's the long. He's comprised of or composed of 10 of you little guys. Can you see that? You put those 10 cubes together, you have yourself a long. Very cool. And we keep moving over. Ooh, now we have a flat. He's called the flat because he looks pretty flat. But he's worth 100. Why? Well, because if you take 10 of those longs and you put them all together side by side, you have yourselves a flat. So it's kind of interesting here. So here we have a... Ooh, how many 10s do we have there? I believe we have 10 10s. That makes 100. Okay, we move on to the next one, and as you can see, we have this big, huge monster thing. Yes, that's what we call, uh, I guess we call him a block. And now it looks like it's 10 times greater. Think about that. When we look at that picture, it's a 3D object, but it has 10 flats that are right alongside each other. Therefore, we have a 1,000. So our pattern, all we're already seeing here is, look at here, 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 10, yeah, is 100. 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. So this is key here. We're not adding 10. It may look like we're adding 10, but we're multiplying by 10 because each place value is going to be 10 times greater. So here again, we're going to have 10 hundreds because 10 hundreds together is going to make 1,000. So the pattern here is 10, 10. 10, that's right, multiplied by 10. Now, finally, we have this would be just humongous. We have 10,000. Okay, so as I'm thinking, I don't know what that guy's name is. Come to, we would draw, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like a cube or a block. It would be almost like, like another really long, long thing because here, you see here, 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10, okay? It's like a perfect cube, just like that little guy. Except he's just 1 times 1 times 1. 1 times 1 times 1. Okay, making him 1. And here we have 10 times 10 times 10. So here, I don't see how that could be. I don't know what you would call him. It's like, it's one of these guys, like a long, but he's just going to be super long. So I'm just going to put long. I don't know what he's called. Just like the pattern, we had 10 hundreds makes 1,000. Then that means 10 thousands are going to make our 10,000. Right? Because if we have 1,000 and we multiply that by 10, yes, my friends, yes, indeed, you get 10,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, isn't that just wonderful? Yeah, uh huh. Now we come over here, it says a small cube represents one. And we see it listed there. Okay, so many small cubes make a long. So we already know that's 10. 10 small cubes together will make a long. So the long represents 10. That's the value. Now it says 10 long, yeah, 10 longs. We already know that. Put 10 those together, we'll make a flat. So the flat represents 100. 10 flats makes a large cube. That's true. 
There's our lucky 10 again. 10 flats will make that large cube, as you can see up above. That's right. If we take 10 of them together, it'll make that one cube. The large cube represents, now we know, 1,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is so easy. I love fourth grade. Yes, let's keep on moving. Now it says, describe the pattern in the shapes of the models. What will be the shape of the model for 10,000? Ooh, look at my little white arrow. Yeah! Okay, now, so let's go ahead and do that. Describe the pattern in the shapes of the models. What will be the shape of the model for 10,000? Well, let me see. So the pattern in the shapes of the models, and the very first one was a cube. So let's just write this down. We'll put cube. And then the next pattern was long. Then we went to a flat. Pattern the shapes of the model. The shape, this was a cube. Then it turned into a long. Then it turned into a flat. All right, we already know. Then it becomes like a cube again. Yes? A large cube. Because it's a perfect cube. What will be the shape of the model for 10,000? Well, if it's going to follow that pattern, we're looking at cube, long, flat, cube. That would mean that the next one would be long. And that's what we kind of decided on with that very large quantity of 10,000. So and I guess it would follow that pattern. Then would the 100,000 end up becoming a flat? Okay, I guess that's the pattern because they want us to see that. Okay, when I think of place value, I don't know if I think of that as being the most important concept here. Just my humble opinion. Uh, because, you know, what I think is most significant is that when you see these numbers that you see the pattern that they are increasing by a power of 10. That's what's most important here, that you're actually multiplying by 10 every time you move up into a new place value. It's just basically saying you have another group of 10, but it's 10 times greater. Here you have just one group, if you will, of 10 ones, giving you the 10, and it just each time it's going, that's the key concept here, times 10. Okay, describe the pattern you see in the sizes of the models. How will the size of the model for 100,000 compare to the size of the model for 10,000? Well, I think we just talked about that. In a sense, if we're describing the pattern, describe the pattern you see in the sizes of the models, in the sizes. Well, each one is 10 times greater. So that's what I would say is that the pattern, um, the pattern I see in each, and let's put increasing size. I'm trying to write the best I can, you know, I'm just kind of learning how to do this. Okay, the pattern I see in each increasing size is that it becomes 10 times greater. Okay. How will the size of the model for 10,000, well, I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. Ah! How will the size of the model for 100,000 compare to the size of the model for 10,000? Huh, it's going to be 10 times greater. It will be 10 times greater. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be 10 times, I'm going to write it this way, it will be 10 times greater in size than the 10,000. And I'm referring to the 100,000. And you know, it's kind of interesting, you guys, you know how easy this is, but when you look at 10,000 and you think about 100,000 and you compare those two numbers, look at it. We're talking, it's got one additional zero. Here we have four, here we have five. One additional zero is like times 10. So yes, 10,000 times 10 brings you here. And that's the beauty of our base 10 system. Every single time we come to a 10, we have to regroup. We have 10 tens, we make 100. We have 10 one hundreds, we have to make 1,000. And we just keep increasing because we can never have more than one digit in each place value. Anyway, I don't know, is there more math? Indeed there is. Woohoo! So let's go ahead and continue on. Boy, I was getting sad for a second. I thought that was the end of our math. No, it goes on. Yes, the value of a digit. Ooh, yes. It says the value of a digit depends on its place value position in the number. A place value chart can... Hey, where'd that white arrow come back again? Yeah, what are you doing here? Okay, sorry. I got distracted. Yes, even teachers, we get distracted. Okay, the value of a digit depends on its place value position in the number. So true. Yes. 
I like that. That is so true. You get a star. Okay, a place value chart can help you understand the value of each digit in a number. The value of each place is 10 times the value of the place to the right. We kind of talked about that. That 10 times, yeah, to the right, of course. Okay, so we write this number 894,613 in the chart. It says find the value of the digit 9. Okay, and these numbers here, even though they get really large, they're very easy to read because what you have to do is just read the part up to where you see the comma. Okay, and that comma is actually known as a period because that's a group of numbers. But if you just read the 894 and not get too frantic about what comes after, then you can just say 894. Thousand. Now you see your first comma there. That's a thousand. And then you say six hundred thirteen. And you don't say six hundred and thirteen. No, no, no. You just say six hundred thirteen. So let's write that number. So the ones is going to be a three. The tens is going to be a one. The hundreds is a six. Yes. This is so much fun. Four, ten. Here we have nine because we're in the ten thousands here. And then the eight goes right here. There's my number. Okay. I did it. Now, find the value of the digit 9. So here's the digit 9 right here. Okay. Oh, look, they're giving the answer down below. I didn't even see that. It's saying that 9, 10 thousands. That's true because in this column here, we actually have this period is the thousands. This period here is just called the ones. And this period up here is called the millions. So we're in the thousands. And it just happens that we're in the 10,000. So 9, 10 thousands is equal to 90,000. <laughs> A caveman could do it. That's right. A little cave boy could do this one. It says the value of the digit of 9 is 10, 9,000, or we already know, 90,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now let's look at what we have here. It says compare the values of the underlying digits. Ooh, we have to compare. See what similarities or differences there are. The white arrow's back again. Ooh, he's mocking me. Okay, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with the white arrow. It's just, where does he keep coming from? I don't know. It's a mystery. Anyway, we have 2,304. Okay, I see that the three is underlined right here. Woo! Okay, maybe not my best line. And, oh, we have another three that's underlined over here. Now, it says, find the value of three in 2,304. Okay, so rather than me going ahead, which I normally do, I'm going to try to follow GoMath step by step here. Okay, so... Find the value of 3 in 2,304. Well, I just said it, 100, right? 304. Let's write it in our place value chart. Okay, I'm going to put my 4 here. 0, 3, 2. All right. Now, it says think. The value of the digit 3 is, well, it turns us right here. 300. Because it's right there. Let's get any easier than that. Remember, this is that very first period. That's the second period, thousands. Okay. Now, it says step 2. Find the value of 3 in 16,130, 30, 30. You can almost hear it, 35. We'll write the number in our place value chart because this is kind. If you do a place value chart every single time, oh my goodness, you'd get all the answers correct on the test. And your teacher would love you, yes. And it says here, think, the value of the digit 3 is, yeah, it's 30 because it's in period 1 here. And... It has the 10, so just 3 times 10 is 30. So cool. Oh, and don't forget, we have the model over here. It did show the model. The model, the value of the digit 3 is here. The model of the digit 3 over here would be 30. We have three longs. Okay, so now it says each 100 is 10 times as many as 10. Okay, each 100. Think about it. If you have 100, each 100 is 10 times greater as 10. And that's so true when you're writing numbers. Because if you had 10 here, that number to the right is, well, it's actually the number to the left if you actually write 300. Okay. And then 30. And then 3. This is what we're doing. We're just saying that each 100 is 10 times as many as 10. That's true. Because 300 is 10 times as many as 30. So 100 is 10 times as many as 10. That's all we're doing. So 300 is 10 times as many as 30, or I'm sorry, 3 tenths. Okay? My tongue is getting tied there. So the value of 3 in 2,304 is 10 times the value of 3 in 16,135. 16,135. Okay? 
Oh no! Is that that bumper music coming in? Oh no! You know what that means? If you don't, well, hey, if you're new to my channel, remember I was a fifth grade teacher. I have a lot of fifth grade videos up. I'm just starting to put up the fourth grade one. I hope you join me in this fun, fun ride we're going to take. I don't know where, but it'll probably be fourth grade math. Of course, yes, okay. So please, if you haven't had a chance, maybe you want to sub, maybe you want to come back. I hope you do. Please feel free to read. Blah, blah, blah. Please feel free to leave comments. I do try to get back to all questions as, as all humanly possible. In the meantime, my friends, as I always say, live long and prosper.